The purpose of this video is to explain who is NIST. NIST stands for National Institute of Standards and Technology, but what does that mean? And I was inspired to make this because I am studying the special publications. This is a paragraph at the very top of uh, one of the special publications. They say that this publication has been developed by NIST to further its statutory responsibilities under the Federal Information Security Management Act. NIST is responsible for developing information security standards and guidelines, including minimum requirements for federal information systems. But such standards and guidelines shall not apply to all national security systems without the express approval of appropriate federal officials exercising policy authority over such systems. And they end by saying the guideline is consistent with requirements from other things, so... That's the first paragraph in a special publication. Here's the first paragraph in Wikipedia. They're more than just cybersecurity. They're all about uh, physical sciences with a mission to promote innovation in industrial competitiveness. Their activities are organized into laboratory programs that include nanoscale science and technology, engineering, IT, neutron research, material measurement, and physical measurement. And this organization has been around for a while. It was originally known as the National Bureau of Standards. And here's the date it was formed. If you scroll down, you could read that uh, one of my favorite presidents to study, Theodore Roosevelt, appointed the first director. And these directors, interestingly, are nominated by the president and approved by Senate, just like a Supreme Court justice might. And I'm looking for where it says that. Here we go. Since 1989, the director of NIST has been a presidential appointee and is confirmed by the United States Senate. So interesting. Um, that hasn't been going on long, 1989. So I wonder back then, did uh, Teddy Roosevelt just get to say who the director was? No need for Senate confirmation. But going into the history of this Standards Bureau is pretty interesting. All the way back to 1781 in the Articles of Confederation, uh, there was this clause that said that United States Congress shall have the sole and exclusive right and power of regulating the alloy and value of coins struck by their own authority or by that of the respected states fixing the standards of weight and measurement throughout the United States. So this idea of having a standard measurement goes all the way back to making sure money was uniform across the economy. So if you're interested in history, you can read the rest of this. I love history. If you love Teddy Roosevelt, I highly suggest the Edmund Morris books. But to wrap this up, NIST has a headquarter in Maryland, but there's a facility in Boulder, Colorado. The pictures are pretty cool. They must have taken this picture during a cloudy day. I live not too far away from here. But they have several laboratories, as you can see here, some interestingly named ones as well. The Center for Neutron Research. But the one I'm primarily concerned with is this Information Technology Laboratory. So I have a series of videos coming all about NIST special publications and even internal reports. But don't let these videos make you think that's all NIST is involved in. Like, look right here, the SURF 3. A SURF stands for Synchro synchrotron ultraviolet radiation facility and this relates to nasa there there's just so much nist is involved in even during the world trade center collapse well during the world trade center attack they were involved in the investigation of why the towers collapsed the way they did and more recently though they are involved in election technology to develop the voluntary voting system guidelines for voting machines so as we go more digital with everything, including voting, looks like they'll have a hand in that as well. I like that Wikipedia is giving us this list of people involved. Oh, the controversy is probably the most interesting paragraph of this whole entry. These newspapers reported that NIST allowed the National Security Agency, NSA, right, to insert a cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator called Dual EC DRBG into the NIST standard special publication 890 that had a kleptographic backdoor that the NSA can use to covertly predict the future outputs of this pseudo-random number gener generator, thereby allowing the decryption of data. So a backdoor, because it can do this and then read whatever data is being encrypted, that's a pretty intense accusation. And both these papers, The Guardian and The New York Times, are reporting that the NSA worked covertly to get its own version 
of this special publication approved for worldwide use in 2006. The whistleblowing document states that eventually the NSA became the sole editor and that the report or the reports confirm suspicions and technical grounds publicly raised by cryptographers in 2007 that this pseudo number random generator could contain a back door. NIST responded, of course, denying this saying they use transparent public processes to rigorously vet our recommendation standards. I guess that makes sense. Anybody could go and read these NIST standards and go deeper into what they're saying. Now, they're required by a statute to consult with the NSA. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And if you're wondering what happened with this situation, NIST said that if vulnerabilities are found in these or any other NIST standards, we will work with the cryptographic community to address them as quickly as possible. So they opened that publication back up for comments, which eventually led to NIST rescinding this pseudo algorithm number generator. And I just wonder where the proof of that weakness of the predicting of the outputs was the proof of that. Or did they just simply recent due to public concern because of these reports. Well, they have a publication, so they have a flagship scientific journal, which is a good time for me to take you over to their website. Here's the home page. And as I was saying before, they do much more than just cybersecurity. I recently saw a NIST publication about preparing for quantum computers, so I guess if there's anything else more you'd like to learn about who NIST is, you can go to their About section on their webpage.